Okay, we're on to Article 15 now, Classification of Severity Procedures. One says, Member States should ensure that all procedures are classified as non-recovery, mild, moderate or severe, on a case-by-case -case basis using the assignment criteria set out in Annex 8. And we'll have a look at Annex 8 shortly. Two says, Subject to the use of the safeguard clause in Article 55.3, and we'll have a look at that shortly as well. Member States shall ensure that a procedure is not performed if it involves severe pain, suffering or distress that is likely to be long-lasting and cannot be ameliorated. Cannot be ameliorated means cannot make better or become better, i.e. the situation, the trauma cannot be reversed. That's what they mean by ameliorated here. OK, this is the assignment criteria that was mentioned in Article 15, Part 1, and it's Annex 8. Later on we will be looking at some examples of the severity ca categories, but here we are just defining the severity categories. OK, severity classification of procedures. The severity of a procedure shall be determined by the degree of pain, suffering, distress or lasting harm expected to be experienced by an individual animal during the course of the procedure. Section 1, Severity Categories. Non-recovery. Non-recovery is defined as procedures which are performed entirely under general anaesthesia from which the animal should not recover consciousness and these procedures shall be classified as non-recovery. The assignment criteria for mild procedures are as follows. They are procedures on animals as a result of which the animals are likely to experience short-term mild pain, suffering or distress, as well as procedures with no significant impairment of the well-being or general condition of the animals, and these shall be classified as mild. The assignment criteria for moderate experiments on animals are Procedures on animals as a result of which the animals are likely to experience short-term moderate pain, suffering or distress, or long-lasting mild pain, suffering or distress, as well as procedures that are likely to cause moderate impairment of the well-being or general condition of the animals. And as I said, these shall be classified as moderate and lastly, the assignment criteria for severe experiments on animals. And these are procedures on animals as a result of which the animals are likely to experience severe pain, suffering or distress, or long-lasting moderate pain, suffering or distress, as well as procedures that are likely to cause severe impairment of the well-being or general condition of the animals used. And these will be classified as severe. OK, we're looking at Article 15 again, and this is the whole article, just these two paragraphs. And we're going to look at two now. Subject to the use of safeguard clause in Article 55.3, it says, Member States should ensure that the procedure is not performed if it involves severe pain, suffering or distress that is likely to be long-lasting and cannot be ameliorated. So let's have a look now at Article 55, Safeguard Clause 3. We are now looking at Article 55, Safeguard Clause 3, and it reads, Where, for exceptional and scientifically justified reasons, a member state deems it necessary to allow the use of a procedure involving severe pain, suffering or distress that is likely to be long-lasting and cannot be ameliorated, as referred to in Article 15.2, it may adopt a provisional measure to allow such procedure, such a procedure that should be. It goes on, Member States may decide not to allow the use of non-human primates in such procedures. So what this is saying is that under some circumstances a national government can allow experiments that are severe and long-lasting in nature even if they cannot be ameliorated. So basically something like a long-term burn experiment or something like that. Obviously you cannot ameliorate that, you can't make that better. So what the EU is saying is that 
under certain circumstances, nation states can give permission for these experiments to take place. So any protection, little bit of protection that animals had under Article 15, Part 2, can be taken away. It does say member states may decide not to allow the use of non-human primates in such procedures. So the UK government could have higher standards in Europe if it was to say that no primates were would be allowed to participate in experiments that were long-lasting, cause severe pain, suffering and distress and couldn't be ameliorated. It could just make that clause. It could make that change. The EU is allowing that, i.e. for a nation-state like the UK to have slightly higher standards. However, in general, for scientific reasons, a country can experiment on an animal, even a non-human primate, which is severe, causes suffering and distress. Severe suffering and distress is long-lasting and cannot be ameliorated. To be fair to the European Union, we do have to look at part 4 of article 55. This is the safeguard clause. So it says, a member state which has adopted a provisional measure in accordance with paragraph 1, 2 or 3, they say it shall immediately inform the Commission and the other member states thereof, giving reasons for its decision and submitting evidence of the situation as described in paragraphs 1, 2 and 3, on which the provisional measure is based. So at least if a vivisector is doing one of these experiments in the EU, it will have to notify the Commission and other member states. So hopefully at least it will become public and hopefully we will be able to protest against it. We have to continue a bit with Part 4 because this is a continuation of Article 55 Safeguard Clause Part 4. So we just read the first bit. So the second bit reads, The Commission shall put the matter before the committee referred to in Article 56.1, we'll have a look at that later, within 30 days of receipt of the information from the Member State and shall, in accordance with the regulatory procedure referred to in Article 56.3, either A. authorise the provisional measure for a time period defined in the decision or B. require the Member State to revoke the provisional measure. Looking at this safeguard clause... Uh, I suppose, I, I think the experiment doesn't actually start. You propose the experiment as a member state that you want to do one of these experiments which is going to cause severe pain, distress and suffering, long-term pain, and it's not going to be able to ameliorate it. So, like, take a burn experiment, for instance, a third-degree burn experiment where they might want to look at the internal organs and how burns affect the internal organs of the body, I mean, that's probably going to be what they're talking about here, a really severe experiment. Uh, but it doesn't look like the experiment starts and then they ask the Commission. It looks like they have to ask the Commission if they're thinking about undertaking such an experiment. And hopefully then the committee that's set up by the ex Commission will revoke the proposal. Anyway, we're finished looking at Article 15 by looking at Annex Eight, section 3 and this is about examples of the severity categories it reads examples of different types of procedure assigned to each of the severity categories on the basis of factors related to the type of the procedure so we're going to look at mild moderate and severe now examples of mild pain suffering or distress are a administration of anesthesia except for the sole purpose of killing b pharmacokinetic study where a single dose is administered and a limited number of blood samples are taken totaling less than 10 percent of the circulating volume and the substance is not expected to cause any detectable adverse effect c non-invasive imaging of animals e.g mir with appropriate sedation or anaesthesia. D. Superficial procedures, e.g. ear and tail biopsies, non-surgical subcutaneous implantation of mini-pumps and transponders. 
E. Application of external telemetry devices that cause only minor impairment to the animals or minor interference with normal activity and behaviour. A telemetry device is like a transmitter. F. Administration of substances by subcutaneous intramuscular intraperitoneal routes. Gavage. And gavage is a, is, is a plastic tube down the throat down the throat or, or through to the throat through the nose or the mouth and you put drugs or food down that that's how the suffragettes were fed and intravenously via superficial blood vessels where the substance has no more than mild impact on the animal and the volumes are within appropriate limits for the size and the species of the animal g induction of tumors or spontaneous tumors that cause no detectable clinical adverse effects e.g. small subcutaneous non-invasive nodules. H. Breeding of genetically altered animals, which is expected to result in a phenotype with mild effects. I. Feeding of modified diets that do not meet all of the animal's nutritional needs and are expected to cause mild clinical abnormality within the timescale of the study. H I J short term that's less than twenty four hour restraint in metabolic cages that could be in the moderate category because I've heard that it's a nightmare for the animals to be restrained in these cages. Anyway, K says studies involving short term deprivation of social partners, short term solitary caging of adult rats or mice of sociable strains. L. Models which expose animals to noxious stimuli which are briefly associated with mild pain, suffering or distress and which the animals can successfully avoid. M. A combination or accumulation of the following examples may result in a classification as mild. 1. Assessing body composition by non-invasive measures and with minimal restraint. 2. Monitoring ECG with non-invasive techniques with minimal or no restraint or habituated animals, of, sorry, habituated animals. Uh, that means they've become used to the technique. 3. Application of external telemetry devices that are expected to cause no impairment to socially adapted animals and do not interfere with normal activity and behaviour. 4. Breeding genetically altered animals which are expected to have no clinically detectable adverse phenotype. 5. Adding inert markers in the diet to follow passage of digests. 6. Withdrawal of food for less than 24 hours in adult rats. And finally, 5, 6, 7, 7. Open field testing. Uh, we'll go on to look at the category moderate pain suffering and distress now okay this is two moderate pain part a and it says frequent application of test substances which produce moderate clinical effects and withdrawal of blood samples greater than 10 percent of circulating volume in a conscious animal within a few days without volume replacement b acute Dose ranging finding studies, chronic toxicity carcinogenicity tests with non lethal endpoints. And C. Surgery under general anaesthesia and appropriate analgesia associated with post surgical pain, suffering, or impairment of general condition. Uh, examples include thoroctomy which is an incision into the chest to gain access to the heart and lungs. That's quite a major operation. Cranotomy, I hope I'm pronouncing these correctly, is the removal of bone to gain access to the brain. Laprotomy, and that's a large incision through the abdominal wall. Orchidectomy, and this is the removal of a testicle. Uh, lympho Dianectomy, and this is removing the lymph nodes, usually around the armpits, it would be in humans anyway. Thyroidectomy, which is the removal of the thyroid gland. 
orthopaedic surgery with effective stabilisation and wound management, organ transplantation with effective management of rejection, surgical implantation of catheters or biomedical devices, e.g. telemetry transmitters, mini pumps, etc. So the gist of this is they're going to treat... They recognise that the pain after surgery, like everyone that's had an operation knows, is quite painful. Uh, the animals will experience moderate pain, but really I don't think they should experience moderate pain at all. I mean, just like humans shouldn't have to, even though we do, because they can be given analgesics to relieve any pain. Anyway, I'm going to get on to D now. So D reads, models of induction of tumours or spontaneous tumours are expected to cause moderate pain or distress or moderate interference with normal behaviour. E, irradiation or chemotherapy with a sublethal dose or with an otherwise lethal dose but with reconstitution of the immune system. Adverse effects would be expected to be mild or moderate and would be short-lived, and that's less than five days. F reads, breeding of genetically altered animals, which are expected to result in a phenotype with moderate effects. G, creation of genetically altered animals through surgical procedures. And H, use of metabolic cages involving moderate restriction of movement over a prolonged period, up to five days. I, and these are the last three under the moderate category, I read studies with modified diets that do not meet all of the animal's nutritional needs and are expected to cause moderate clinical abnormality within the time scale of the study. I, J, withdrawal of food for 48 hours in adult rats. And lastly, K, evoking escape and avoidance reactions where the animal is unable to escape or avoid the stimulus and are expected to result in moderate distress. Okay, I think they're trying to create mental health models there of anxiety, chronic anxiety, for instance, by frightening the animals. Uh, I can't stand those experiments. Uh, anyway, let's go on now to look at severe category, the severe category. OK, this is Annex H, Section 3, Part 3, and it's about the assignment criteria in the severe category. A reads, toxicity testing where death is the end point or fatalities are expected and severe pathophysiological states are induced. For example, single-dose acute toxicity testing. Now, this is the LD50 test, and this is where you give a substance, say, to... 20 animals and the substance has to be at such a value that 10 of the animals will die and that is why it's called lethal dose 50 test so if you can imagine giving a drug or a chemical to 20 animals and it has to be high enough to kill 50 percent of them so you will watch as 10 of them die B reads, testing of device where failure may cause severe pain, distress or death of the animal, e.g. cardiac assist device. So I can imagine the animal dies of a heart failure. C reads, vaccine potency testing categorised by persistent impairment of the animal's condition, progressive disease leading to death, associated with long-lasting moderate pain, distress or suffering. D. Irradiation or chemotherapy with a lethal dose without reconstitution of the immune system or reconstitution with production of graft versus host disease. So here you're giving a lethal dose of radiation or chemotherapy that completely destroys the animal's immune system. The second part of the the sentence I have to hold up my hands and say I don't understand it uh, okay let's go to E E reads models with induction of tumors or with spontaneous tumors are expected to cause progressive lethal disease associated with long-lasting moderate pain distress or suffering for example tumors causing not sure how to say this but it says cachexia I think 
and that is loss of weight or muscle atrophy not associated with eating less. So that sounds pretty horrible, that disease. Invasive bone tumours, tumours resulting in metastatic spread, that means the spread of the tumour around the rest of the body, and tumours that are allowed to ulcerate. F. Surgical and other interventions in animals under general anaesthesia which are expected to result in severe or persistent moderate post-operative pain, suffering or distress or severe and persistent impairment of the general condition of the animals. Uh, the experiments that were done in Cambridge on primates probably fall into that bracket. Uh, it goes on, production of unstable fractures, thoroctomy without adequate analgesia, or trauma to produce multiple organ failure. Again, this could be Burns' experiment, you know, giving animals beagles, they're doing it in China, I've heard. They give them 75% burns, and then they try and understand why this trauma causes multiple organ failure. Some of the worst experiments that you can possibly imagine. G. Organ transplantation, where organ rejection is likely to lead to severe distress or impairment of the general condition of the animals, e.g. xenotransplantation. Xenotransplantation is where you take the heart, say from a pig, and you put it into a monkey or another animal, and you're basically swapping around organs, uh, organs and cells and tissues from different animals. And then you try and work out why that animal is rejecting that organ. You know, it's all to do with the immune system. Uh, this causes severe pain and distress in the animals as they slowly die because the organ, the foreign organ in their body, is rejected. The reason why scientists want to know why they fail is because there are a lot of people on the organ waiting list in different countries and there's a shortage of human organs. We're now on to H and this reads breeding animals with genetic disorders that are expected to experience severe and persistent impairment of general condition. For example Huntington's disease, muscular dystrophy and chronic relapsing neuritis models. Uh, so they're creating animal models here with severe diseases. Huntington's disease is a neurological disorder which affects muscle coordination and you have severe mental health problems later on in the disease. How, how well they can actually create these diseases in animals is very debatable and Often it's not an exact replica of the disease and they spend a lot of time trying to create drugs for these diseases to find later on that they don't work in humans. So there's a lot of criticism anyway. Anyway, what else we got here? We've got muscular dystrophy and this is a muscle disease whereby the death of muscle cells leads to skeletal muscle weakness and eventually death. I think it only affects boys and it's a very tragic disease. I mean the boys are born completely normal, completely healthy and they slowly deteriorate and by the time they're 20 they've usually passed away. I mean it is really a tragic disease. I don't know much about neuritis models but neuritis is an inflammation of the nerves so it could be something to do with Crohn's disease or multiple cirrhosis, th those kind of models. Lupus, I think, is another one. They're very difficult diseases to cure. Uh, but again, I say there's a lot of criticism. These models do not accurately represent the diseases anyway. OK, this is a little bit distressing, all this, but, you know, for the animals and humans, I mean, illness, disease, it is very distressing, and some of these disease diseases are absolutely tragic for humans. But I still don't think that justifies inducing them in animals. Anyway, uh, let's carry on and look at I. And it says use of metabolic cages involving severe restriction of movement over a prolonged period. So that must be very distressing for the animals. Uh, J reads inescapable electric shock, e.g. to produce learned helplessness. Again, it's just absolutely awful, but again, here they are trying to create a 
model of schizophrenia often I think it is with this one okay we're down to the last three examples in the severe category now K reads complete isolation for prolonged periods of social species e.g. dogs and non-human primates the reason why they're doing this again is to create models of human mental ill health such as post-traumatic stress disorder uh, maybe depression chronic anxiety anyway mental health problems and then once they've created the model they are going to try and create drugs to cure the diseases the conditions that they've induced in the animals a lot of scientists say this is complete baloney and you know they're much better off looking at human examples of people that have these diseases F reads immobilization stress to induce gastric ulcers or cardiac failure in rats again here they're not allowing the rats to move at all or hardly at all and this will induce so much stress that the rat will get a gastric ulcer or its heart will begin to fail again they are trying to create models of disease here in the hope that they will then be able to cure those diseases and then those results from those experiments will be able to be applied to human beings and then they will be able to cure human beings and M reads forced swim or exercise tests with exhaustion as the end point. If you've seen these tests, well, they're very distressing to watch. And what is the point of them? Again, it is to create models of stress. Okay, that's the end of looking at the severe category. Just a quick comment before we go on to the next article. Uh, the Green Party is the only party, the only political party that wants to put an end to animal experimentation. Uh, don't be put off that science is going to end and we're not going to be able to cure diseases anymore. There are quite a few scientists who say that we're actually being held up because we're using these animal models which aren't representative of the human diseases. Anyway, we really need to fill the European Parliament, which has 766 members, and at the moment we've only got 58 Greens. We really need to get about 350 Greens to 400 Greens in there. This is the only way I feel that we can end animal experimentation in Europe.